Uh, you guys seen a Suicide Squad? Yeah. 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 Uh, my boyfriend, I feel like, was the one person who liked it. Uh, <laughs> he just loves Will Smith. He's always like, I love Will Smith. I want to be Will Smith. I'm like, uh, if you love Will Smith, like, so much, then why don't you just marry me? Why won't you marry me? But it's cool, it's cool. I got a job, I got friends. There's only one thing a man can give me that I can't give myself. Am I right, ladies? Am I right? Yeah, yeah, something to live for. <laughs> can do it on my own, it doesn't feel the same. Um, we used to live in a 250 square foot apartment, which as a frame of reference is a uh, really fucking small. <laughs> And also, we were only dating a month before we moved in together. And also, we both work from home. Which, I know what you're thinking, but it actually turned out to be a really bad idea. Uh, uh, the, like, there was so much emotional talking that he wanted to do all of the time. I'm like, I have to break up with you because one of us is a lesbian and it's you. <laughs> Jalisa, if you know anyone. <laughs> I mean, and also, we didn't have any furniture, so we just were in bed all the time. It was, uh, we just lived like the grandparents from Willy Wonka. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, we did get some exercise in bed. Sex. <laughs> but I don't know, I don't know if it counts as exercise, like the way that I do it, I don't know. Does racquetball count as exercise if you're the wall? <laughs> Flatten on out. Uh, he was a comic, I date a lot of comics. The thing about comics is though, they're like the same in bed as they are on stage. They're like weirdly like insecure about their performance, you know? They're always like, how am I doing? How am I doing? I'm like, um, I'm laughing, aren't I? I don't see, I don't see what the problem is. But I don't know, I'm the same way. I'm a comic too, like I try way too hard. Like once he was like, who's your daddy? And I was like, you are, and I am your daughter, and this is an unconventional but effective method of parenting. So he stopped. Um, because he came. Um, uh, we broke up recently. I've been, uh, been doing that breakup drinking. You guys know about this? It's, it's just an excuse for drinking. I'm not drinking like someone going through a breakup. I'm drinking like a middle-aged man whose daughter was murdered. <laughs> drinking like a gay movie star in the 50s. Like, I gotta chug a secret down. But I don't know, I don't wanna go back to AA. It's not fun there. Everyone there's like, I lost my wife, I lost my kids, lost my job because of drinking. Like, I don't know, I lost my keys sometimes. <laughs> but like, the thing about it is they kind of like trick you when you come in there. Like, and I, they're like, Okay, here's how you know if you're a real alcoholic. Answer me this question. Are you a real alcoholic? I was like, no, I don't, I don't think I am. And they're like, and that's how you know. That's what all the real alcoholics say. I was like, okay, well then can I change my answer? Because I don't think I am to yes, I am an alcoholic, I guess. Like, and that's step one, and now you are in the program. <laughs> I was like, oh man, feeling pretty powerless right now. They're like, and that is step two. It's like, God help me. And they're like, that is step three. And now you are chapter president. Congratulations, Miss Davis. I run AA now. Um, so I'm a comic, but really I'm, I'm more of an actor, to be completely honest. So I want you guys to see uh, my true passion. Uh, I found this monologue. I've never read it before want you to see me transform into the character before your very eyes. All right, this is from Shadow Boy, spooky, okay. All right, we moved from Chicago when I was 13. That was almost 60 years ago. 
We moved to a <laughs> tiny apartment in a bad neighborhood so I could go to school with all white kids. <laughs> Mind you, I'd seen white people before. But I'd never been friends with one. First day of school, I was scared, but I told myself, Frank, it's time to be a man. So I walked in and another boy spit at me. I didn't say anything because back then I was still ashamed of my lisp. <laughs> so I stood there, strong, still, silent. For that was something that had never happened to me in my native China. And for a long time, that little boy was America to me and America wanted to see me suffer. Thank you guys.